Hey everybody, it's James Lindsay. You're listening to New Discourse's Bullets, in which I break down one topic relevant to woke Marxism that we need to understand so we can defeat it. Kind of like a bullet point, hence the bullets. So in this episode, I'm going back to struggle sessions. I'm going to talk about the hard truth of struggle sessions, um, which to just jump to the punchline, the hard truth of a struggle session is that once you capitulate to a struggle session, once you give in to a struggle session, there is almost no coming back. The loss that you incur is more or less final. It's very difficult to come back. It's maybe possible that the people around you and yourself can rally and hold you up as a victim of the political violence that is a struggle session. It is maybe possible that time enough will pass to where you can be forgiven for the mistakes that you made, but it's really not good. So let's remind you of what a struggle session is and then talk about why this is the hard truth, what it does to you. So a struggle session is a form of psychological torture that is used largely through social means and psychological means to get you to confess to a crime that doesn't exist on contrived terms. It is a tool of totalitarians. It is a tool that is designed to get you to adopt the premises, the belief structures, the religion of the totalitarian system. That's all it is. It is a means of bullying you to make you think that you're going to be socially ostracized, that you're a bad person, that nobody can like you, that we can't have unity until you get along with the new program, and to convince you that you actually committed a crime against the system that's only defined in terms of the system's contrived terms. What are some examples? It's very abstract. In communist China, they called it the people's standpoint. The goal of the struggle session was to get you to see the world from the people's standpoint, which is the CCP communist interpretation of society. There's this concept called the people, the CCP, the Communist Party represents the people and the people's ambitions and the people's revolution and the people's society operated through the dictatorship of the people. And your job is to see things the way this communist understanding of the people see things. It is to get you to believe that the viewpoint, the standpoint of the people, called the people's standpoint, literally, is the correct way to view the world. And that is the communist perspective. That is a perspective that says that everything you do must be for the benefit of the people, for the greater good, really, for the socialist system itself. And Anything that you do that harms the socialist project, therefore harms the people. And so the goal is to get you to adopt the contrived terms of socialism. Now in DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion training, you're also going through struggle sessions. The goal is to get you to adopt the mindset of inclusion for the purposes of equity. Diversity is our strength. We just want to plank a place where everybody feels like they belong and that they're included. We have an affirming space. This is a safe space. These are the kinds of things. We, we, we pursue equity in all things. These are the kinds of viewpoints that they want you to adopt. So they accuse you of the things that hold us back on their contrived terms from having that society or institution or company or board or whatever. And those terms are that you're a systemic racist. You uphold transphobia. You participate in heteronormativity to the exclusion of of gays and lesbians and bisexuals and trans and queer or whatever else. It's that you hold exclusionary values that prevent the value of inclusion from flourishing, where inclusion means that you're including the people who have the woke Marxist, uh, woke being the keyword, awakened, critical understanding of what it means to occupy those identi identity positions. So what your tr the contrived terms are that there are these and like systems of evil spirits like systemic racism that prevent people of color from feeling fully included and participatory in the system. And anybody who upholds that is somehow excluding those people from full citizenship or participation. And those people therefore have to be re-educated. The point of the struggle session in the DEI setting is to accuse you of perpetuating systemic racism or homophobia or sexism or misogyny or transphobia or ableism or fatphobia or whatever else. Um, 
xenophobia, Islamophobia, these are the other ones now, is to accuse you of upholding those so that they can get you to confess that you understand that the way of thinking about the issue is the correct one in the first place. It's hard to understand because they've created a contrived understanding of racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, all these things. They've created a contrived system of power that you don't understand. And the goal is to get you to confess that you sinned against it to drag you into a desire to understand on their terms. The thing is, once you confess, you're done. See, the thing is, is that they're going to create massive amounts of psychological and especially social pressure on you to get you to capitulate, to get you to confess, to get you to apologize, to get you to say that you understand now from that other standpoint or perspective. But you will not be released from the pressure when you do that. In fact, the pressure will increase on you. Because what you will be accused of next is that you didn't do so sincerely. You haven't fully repented of your sins. You can't fully articulate the ways that you've been complicit in everything wrong in the world that prevents us from having a new unity on a new basis. You are not fully comprehending. You, in fact, probably are only confessing to get the pressure off of you, which is not sincere at all. This is what you saw in Mao's prisons. This is what you see in DEI. This is what you see in the theories about allyship. When you say, I oh, no, no, I get it. I'm an ally now. They say that you're just trying to position yourself as a good white so that you avoid accusations of bigotry while you get to maintain your bigotry. Your confession isn't sincere enough. That's the repeated message again and again and again. So when you finally do capitulate, you don't let the pressure off of yourself. They will probably give you a small amount of reprieve to make you think for a very short amount of time that you've done the right thing. You get that relief, and then they hit you with the next level of how you weren't doing it right. Here's another example. They get it so there's lots of people and lots of families who have a person who's transitioning and now you have the care for trans people. So you come out publicly in defense of trans rights and they celebrate you briefly before telling you that what you're engaging in is called relationship allyship. It's not legitimate allyship because legitimate allyship doesn't just favor the people in your family that you're trying to protect. It's for the issue for the issue's sake itself. So you're actually not an ally you're a selfish person still who's just defending members of your own family so you don't have it right. So the struggle session begins again on a deeper and more profound level. You don't get out of the pressure. But the cold, hard truth of the struggle session is that if you confess, even by apologizing, even acknowledging, if you confess at all, not only do you sell a piece of your soul and trade it out for a piece of the contrived terms of the totalitarian system that's doing this torture to you, but you're basically done. That's the cold truth. There's almost no coming back from capitulating to a struggle session. You, I hate to say it, have to endure. It gets worse and it gets worse and it gets worse and it gets worse because the point is to break you. And the second you break, it doesn't get better. They give you a tiny reprieve and hit you again. And the whole, you have no way to resist. And once you do it, you're done. Why? Because there are three audiences paying attention to you besides yourself. And you are actually one of the audiences too. You know yourself just like your friends know yourself. Your friends are counting on you not to capitulate. They want to see you st stand strong and succeed, even though they're often not present standing there in support of you, which is exactly what they should be doing. The left has an entire complicated knowledge or uh, theory of solidarity. And in, in, in fact, more than a theory, a practice of solidarity that they defend each other, no matter how egregious the thing is, all the time, except when they're consolidating power and then they do selective uh, kind of character assassinations within their own ranks. But if somebody from the outside, if the right wing were a, to attack a leftist, it doesn't matter what, how real it is, how bad it is, it doesn't matter. They all circle the wagons and protect in solidarity. Your friends should be in solidarity with you. They're often not making the struggle session harder because they're outside of a totalitarian system. Well, they want to see you succeed and you didn't. You let them down. You, in fact, more, more than that, showed yourself to be faithless. In fact, that's what you showed yourself as well. You know that you now have a place where you'll crack. As it turns out, this doesn't make you stronger. It makes you weaker. You now trust yourself less and your friends trust you less because you've shown yourself to be faithless under the pressure. So it doesn't get better with your friends. So you're not coming back with them. You just take a fall. Now, here's the problem. There's the people that are actually doing this to you as well, the manipulators, the totalitarians. 
You don't elevate yourself in their, in their eyes. You just showed that you can be broken. So they're going to break you until they break you all the way so they can rebuild you within their own mold until they own you. They will never leave you alone and it only gets worse and they will constantly refer back to the time they broke you to remind you that they can break you forever. So you don't elevate yourself with your friends. You don't elevate yourself with your enemies, your tormentors. And then there's the third party, the watchers. The people out there who see the struggle session, but they're not really invested in it. And what they see is you accept the contrived terms. And when they see you accepted the contrived terms, they think, well, there must be something to the contrived terms. Systemic racism must be a problem. The people must have a legitimate standpoint. The person confessed to a crime, so they must be guilty of a crime. So the crime must be defined on terms that are real. And so the third party watching audience also doesn't come to your rescue or stand with you or is there for, or wasn't really there for you anyway but for them you've now reified the contrived terms of the tormentors of the totalitarians who don't respect you more they now know that they can beat you and your friends have seen you be faithless and you yourself have been faithless and will feel that the only path back from that is true repentance you have to repent of your moment of weakness you have to repent of what led to you to 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 give in you have to repent of Uh, whatever you did in bargaining with the enemy, you have to repent for yourself first, and then you have to build your way back up to faithfulness with your friends, which is not an easy thing to do. It's just not. And so the cold, hard truth of a struggle session is that you can't capitulate because you're done. That's it. You don't come back from them. You are either out of the game, at least for a long time, or you are... uh, slowly broken and remolded into the enemy's camp. There is no coming back from a struggle session if you give in. So how do you resist giving in? First of all, you need to know that. The point of the thing is to break you, is to get you to confess to a contrived crime that's not real. You must not do that. Whatever it takes to find the inner strength not to compromise on the truth, you have to find it. If If it's prayer, if it's whatever, you have to find that strength. You have to find the strength to stand for what you know to be true, regardless of what it does to you, to stand in the truth. Now, because it's a form of psychological torture that primarily uses a social environment, if you are not the person being struggled and you see somebody being struggled, it is incumbent upon you before they cave in, incumbent upon you to stand with them, to make sure they know they're not alone, to make sure that they know that you have their back, to make sure they know there are people out there who say, you know, you know what, I like him, I think he does good work. Don't even mention whether or not there was a mistake, but if there was a mistake, it was an honest mistake, and no, they are not a bad person, and no, those terms are still bogus. It's your job to stand with that person and to help call out the struggle session. This is a struggle session. That person's being tortured. Support that person for being tortured. Condemn the people doing it. This is absolutely necessary in order to create the conditions in which people can survive struggle sessions. Because again, the cold truth of one, and this isn't one of these cheerful, peppy episodes, the point of the episode is that the cold, hard truth of a struggle session is you don't come back from them if you give in. The goal is to get you to give in, to confess to a crime on contrived terms, so that the contrived terms gain more support, and you don't come back from it once you do it. You're lost. It's You might come back individually, but you're, you're never going to be able to make the difference you were hoping to make. They beat you. Um, You've got to stand with people who are put through this. You've got to help them. We can't keep losing people to left-wing struggle sessions. You have to understand that you are not alone. You are not being isolated. The people, the pressure that they put on you to make you think that everybody will disrespect you or hate you is not real. It's a contrivance of the left and those people, of the totalitarians as a matter of fact, and those people are the only ones who dislike you. And the reason they dislike you is because they're not breaking you. So don't let them break you and don't let them break your friends. It's so, so important. 